Today, I want to talk about untrainable breeds. Are there really breeds that cannot be trained? If you have an untrainable breed, what should you do? I will answer these questions and I also interviewed someone who achieved amazing results in dog sports with a not traditionally trainable breed. Let's go. Quite often when I post training advice specifically about focus and engagement, I receive one common response. A lot of owners think that because their dog is not a traditionally very trainable breed, they cannot learn said skills. Of course, genetics play a big role in our dog's behavior. And some breeds were developed to work very closely with their human, whereas other breeds were developed to work more independently. And absolutely, if you own a dog that was bred for more independent work, it will probably take longer and you will need to be a little bit more creative to train them than with a breed that already is primed to want to please us. However, and I want to be really clear about this, your dog's breed is only one factor out of many that will determine the training outcome. And actually, it is the one thing that you cannot change. However, there are so many other factors that will influence how well your training works. Being really knowledgeable about your dog's reward hierarchy, planning training sessions and carrying them out methodically instead of just winging it, having great timing when marking behaviors, training behaviors in small successive steps, being knowledgeable about reward placement, understanding which speed of progression works for your dog, training consistently over long periods of time, matching your rate of reinforcement to the dog's skill and the challenge level of the environment, being smart about managing environmental reinforcers. Now, you know what the great thing is? All of these are things you can change. You can start improving your own training skills in any of these categories starting today. There are unlimited possibilities for you out there to become a better trainer. The only one thing you cannot change is your dog's breed. But there are so many other things that you can change. And I think that's actually a very encouraging thought because the fact that your dog is a certain difficult to train breed will not keep you from training them. If you strive to become the best possible trainer for your dog, I promise they will greatly improve. And really, if we say it is the dog's breed that makes it impossible to train, what we are implying is that we already are perfect trainers. We know exactly what to do, exactly when to do. We have fantastic timing. We have absolute mastery of reinforcement. And that's just not true. There are no perfect trainers. I strive every day to become a better trainer for my dogs. And I know many other professional dog trainers who also try every single day very hard to become better at training. If we take the time to improve our training skills and to really get to know what our dog needs in training, I promise they will improve no matter their breed. And now, after I told you all this, here is the proof. I interviewed an incredibly accomplished agility handler who had amazing successes in dog sports with a definitely very independent and unconventional breed. I'm Leanne Miller and we're going to be talking about Soleil, my Kuvas. The Kuvas originated in Hungary. They're a very ancient breed. They were developed to protect and so they're very independent. They think for themselves, they act for themselves. They are very confident and know that they're right. And because of that independence, they are very interesting to train. We got our first Kuvas in the late 80s. We had gotten married, moved to a house. I wanted dogs. We had a couple of Malamutes that uh, backyard bred, few health problems. And then we started looking in books and we loved the description of the Kuvas. They're a noble breed. They're very, they're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous dogs, very loyal to their owners. And we decided to get Kuvas. Never met a single one before we got our first puppy. So Soleil and I had a very long and wonderful career together. 
I got her from a very dear friend who lives in Virginia now, who's Hungarian. The Kuvas are Hungarian. She's bred Kuvas uh, most of her life. And this was the third Kuvas we had gotten from her. And just an amazing little puppy. She started agility lessons when she was 11 weeks old. And we traveled the country because of our agility career. We were invited to the AKC Invitational five or six times. We went once, it's an 1800 mile drive, so we went once and it's in the winter. Uh, we had a great time. I think she qualified three out of four runs at that Invitational, got the top Kuvas award. She has been to California, going to a Belgian Sheepdog National when she was four months old. She had a great time. And we have traveled to multiple states uh, to do agility together and just a great traveling companion. Very sweet, very loving, great with people, but appropriately protective when she felt that her mom, me, was uh, maybe threatened. So great traveling companion and home companion. Soleil also did tracking. She had a very natural scenting ability and very honest about it. You knew when she was on the track and you knew when she was chasing bunny tracks. And so we did uh, tracking. She earned her tracking dog title. I can't even remember how old she was now, but she earned her tracking dog title. And the day she earned it, she ran her track in about five minutes. She didn't make a single misstep. Uh, one of the judges commented on how well she ran that track and how impressed he was with her. And she also had a perfect article indication. She would go to the article and drop and turn around and look at me. So she was just, she was an amazing tracking dog too and just loved it. Every dog is different and every dog is trainable in different ways. And you just have to figure out what works for that dog. I've had Malamutes, Kuvas, and Belgian Sheepdogs, and they all learn differently. They all have different levels of excitement about different things. So my advice is always figure out what you and your dog enjoy, and then just dive in and do it. And they are all trainable. You just, some you have to be a little more creative. Some don't put up with repetition. Some love repetition. You just have to figure out what works for that dog. And that's really the fun of dog training is figuring out how to work with that particular dog and become a successful team. Um, I'll, I'll also add that I showed a Kuvas. All of my Kuvas have done multiple things. I've put uh, companion dog excellent titles on my Kuvas in the past, trialed at the utility dog level, didn't quite get there. But all of, my, all of my dogs have done some kind of training and it's often in breeds that people don't do a lot of performance events. And I can tell you that the bond that you get with your dog by training them is more than you will ever have if you just live in the same house with them. So I highly recommend whatever it is, nose work, um, tracking, agility, obedience, Whatever you and your dog enjoy, just go for it. And the, the time and effort is well worth the increased companionship that you get with your dog. Every dog has challenges. There is no perfect dog. Uh, you'll often see somebody else running their dog and you're like, wow, that dog just saves their butt every time and does everything and they're just perfect. And you just never really know how much work that person put into getting to that point. So don't always look at the finished product, look at and ask people, what did they do to get to where they are? Because there is no perfect dog. We work through issues with every single one of them. And so never give up on them.